Hi everybody, welcome to Comic Book Breakdown. This is a bit of a weird episode. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what this is going to look like. This is, I literally just read some comic news that has me excited. Um, and I figured that I would do a little something talking about it. We basically, uh, if you've listened to the podcast, if you've been with the podcast from the beginning, you know that I'm a huge X-Men fan. Uh, the X-Books make up like the core of my comic book collection. Um, I've been buying Uncanny X-Men since I first started reading comic books way back in like 1994, 1996. Um, I love the X-Men books. They have shaped me as a person. I have an a inordinate amount of love for them. And I was, I have really been enjoying the current run of books that Marvel has been putting out. Um, spearheaded by author Jonathan Hickman, along with a creative, uh, uh, one of the most interesting group of creative teams that I've ever seen on the X-Books in a very long time. It's been a very ambitious project. Um, Marvel is letting Hickman push concepts forward that are very strange for the X-Men, uh, that are very different, uh, that take the book in different directions that we, we haven't seen the X-Men books go to in a long time. And I've been really excited to continue to watch that unfold. But over the past couple of months, it's really looked like Jonathan Hickman has been stepping away from the X-Men books. From from the perspective of an outsider looking in, it looks like Hickman got bored and he's moving away. Uh, he left the main X-Men title. It's currently, it got relaunched and is being written by Jerry Dugan. Uh, the first two issues are out. They've been great reads so far. They very much feel like Hickman's books. Um, Dugan wrote the, the planet-sized X-Men one-shot recently, and I actually thought that Jonathan Hickman wrote it. That's how similar to Hickman's writing style, Dugan nailed it. Um, so Hickman not only stepped away from X-Men, but then he's writing the upcoming Inferno miniseries, but it looks like that kind of... To me, it has the vibes like that might be the end of his run on X-Men. Like, maybe he's wrapping up the things that he wanted to tell, and then he's moving on. But we haven't had this confirmed anywhere. Uh, I haven't seen, like, I haven't seen any interviews with Hickman for a long time, and that's because he's actually been working on something. And earlier this week, we finally got a look into what there's been a ton of news recently of comic book authors basically moving away from working for Marvel or DC or even publishing through Image with their own creator own books and instead writing for Substack, a subscription based delivery service. Um, my understanding is basically you would pay some form of fee, you would subscribe to the particular comics that you would want, uh, and they will be delivered digitally to your doorstep. Um, and then evidently, depending on what project you're looking at and the creators involved, they may do physical copies of stuff uh, down the line. But the idea here is to get it to you directly without having to worry about diamond distributors or if COVID got worse and we need to shut down the economy again and suddenly you can't publish and ship books across the entire country. At least you'll get them digitally and creators can continue to do the work that they kind of already do already and keep all of the rights to everything that they do as well. Um, the recent, there's been a whole hell of a lot of gossip recently about comic book creators not getting a fair shake in terms of they're creating the basis that all of these million dollar Hollywood movies are based on and they receive pennies for the work that they put into it, which is a, a real shame. And this looks like it's kind of offering a, a potential alternative uh, around that. So I, I earlier read the press release for Three Worlds, Three Moons, a new concept universe that is being brought to us by Jonathan Hickman, Al Ewing, and Teeny Howard. Um, for those unfamiliar, uh, Al Ewing has, in my, has for me, for me as a reader, uh, has been writing some of the best books that Marvel has put out in the course of the last, like, five to ten years. Um, Mighty Avengers, Captain America and the Mighty Avengers, uh, U.S. Avengers was super fun. Oh my God! Um, his volume of New Avengers. Uh, he did Ultimates when it moved into the regular Marvel Universe. He did Ultimate Squared, its sequel series, uh, and then of course we've got more recently Al Ewing has kind of gotten super famous for doing the writing on the Immortal Hulk series, which is undoubtedly right now, in my opinion, the single best book that Marvel is putting out. Um, and I, I like a lot of stuff that Marvel's putting out, and right now the Immortal Hulk is the best of it. Um, 
Ewing is also doing the writing for Sword, one of the X titles. It's the Space Space X Men title at the moment. Um, so he's he's working within those concepts that Jonathan Hickman laid down during his X Men stuff, but taking it in his own direction. Um, Teeny Howard is not an author that I'm terribly familiar with. She wrote um, Excalibur as part of the current X line, and I have to say Excalibur's probably one of my least favorite titles out of the entire X line right now. Crap happens, I'm sorry. Um, but what, what happened here, and Hickman goes over this um, w within this document, is basically during COVID-19, the industry shut down. And rather than just put everything on pause and not make money for who knows how long this shutdown was going to last, Hickman came up with a plan for delivering the X-Books digitally, 100%. Hello, Konark, thank you. Uh, that's my cat going crazy in the background, don't worry about him. Um, he came up with this huge plan, basically a way to take his ideas from the X-Men, move them all into a digital creation process, and then the writers and artists and inkers and colorists and editors could still do their work and still deliver a product to the audience on time, regularly, in a controlled way that the industry would not have to rely on a distributor for. Konark! I know you just went to the bathroom, but you gotta calm down. Thank you, I love you. Uh, uh, and so basically, he took all of those ideas and he is now applying them to this new concept. And part of what he brings up here, uh, and this is one of the things that I like the most, is the idea that comic books are not exciting anymore. Because so much of the fan culture and the industry and the way comic books are sold is reliant on not just selling you what's coming out this week, but what's coming out next month, and six months from now, and a year from now. You sh you're never allowed a space to be excited about the one thing that came out right now because there's another thing coming out next month. You shouldn't be excited about Absolute Carnage because Venom is building to, to the King in Black crossover series. You shouldn't be excited for Ten of Swords because we've got Planet X-Men coming up later on this year. Uh, there's always one more thing. And as, a, as someone who grew up uh, in the, the late 90s world, I grew up in a post-Age of Apocalypse world, even a post-Clone Saga world. And it, it kind of amazes me that comic fans who came before me got to experience those storylines as they were happening. When Marvel made Ben Riley the Spider-Man and retired Peter Parker for a number of months, you didn't know for a fact that Peter Parker was coming back. When they canceled the entire X-Line as part of the Age of Apocalypse and then relaunched them as new books, you didn't know that was going to be a four-month storyline and then we would go back to normal. All of that excitement, all of that unknown, all of the the craziness of these plot lines that comic books can do gets shot in the foot because we have solicitations available three months ahead of time online and we have interviews with creators and writers about the next thing that's coming no matter what it is that's coming out right now. So the idea of the creators having not only a platform where they can control everything that they're creating and they receive all of the full payment for what they're creating, but that they also are able to surprise you and deliver it to you how they want and when they want. Uh, he does bring up the idea that telling stories of varying lengths, so you're not necessarily going to get a 20 page comic book every month, you could get a 28 page comic book, you get a 40 page, a 60 page, it might take longer, it might take less, but it can show up no matter what, and you're gonna get it, and that's exciting. That's super cool to me. I have never subscribed to a physical comic book in my life. Uh, I don't even, I, I am assuming you could still do that, but like, oh, the, the idea of risking getting my comic books regularly in the mail disgusts me so much. My, my brother and I got Lego magazines when we were kids and they were always like folded and beat up and wet. And as, as a comic book collector who like, who cherishes these things, I can't imagine getting those in the mail and just hoping that they're going to be fine. And I'll admit, the idea of getting these books digitally as opposed to physically does kind of gross me out a little bit. I do, again, I grew up for the past 30 years of my life, I've been buying physical comic books. I have, I have stacks of comic books on my desk right now. 
Um, I have like four different stacks of things on my desk. I love comic books. I love the physical nature of it. I love collecting it. I love organizing all of it. But there's also a part of me that realizes I live in a two-bedroom apartment with my wife and my brother-in-law and my cat. I don't have room for more comic books. Uh, and I do do a lot of my like independent comic buying digitally anyways. So the idea of getting a digital subscription where I'm paying a flat fee to get a certain amount of content every month on time, even if that content shifts every month, that sounds great to me. Um, so I, I love this particular idea to begin with. Um, he then brings up this concept about playing in a band. The idea being that he didn't want to work by himself on one massive project. It's, it's interesting to me that a lot of comic book people tend to be introverts, but then they're also introverts who like working with other people. The comics collaboration process is very much something where you can have a lot of input from a writer or an artist when you're working on a book, depending on how well you get along with them. Some artists want to be involved in the writing process, some don't. So you're able to shift that kind of uh, uh, creative ability more when you are the sole person responsible for writing, drawing, delivering the books. Um, but basically he says here that he wanted to work. Kobo, I love you. Come here. Come here. Please. All right, just stay quiet. Love cats, love them. They're great, angels. Um, but he basically says here that he wanted to play around with some of the other creators. Uh, so he's working with Mike Del Mundo, who has been drawing for Marvel for uh, uh, quite a little bit of time. I'm most familiar with him as one of the main cover artists for X-Men Legacy when Legion was the lead character for that particular volume of the book. Um, he drew an Electro comic book quite a few quite quite a few years ago. Um, he did Weird World for Marvel. He did Thor during one of Jason Aaron's runs. Um, Mike Del Mundo is a fantastic artist. Very trippy kind of stuff. Very visually interesting artist. Some of the most creative covers you've seen in comic books in a long time. As well as uh, Mike Huddleston, who has been working with Hickman on the Image comic book Decorum, um, which is a really strange sci-fi comic book. I've had. I've had a number of people be like, oh man, do you love Mike Huddleston's artwork on this book or what? And I I kind of don't because it's a really mixed medium kind of thing. Like there's a lot of infographics combined with digital work, combined with um, screen tone, combined with hand-drawn stuff, combined with photo, like photos kind of stuff. It's a, vi again, it's a visually, it's a, a feast of a book. It's a lot of stuff to look at, but it's very weird. Um, I've been enjoying the book overall. Visually, it uh, absolutely messes with my head. But he's been working with them to basically build and design the world and everything around it and what's going on in there. And then he teamed up with authors Al Ewing and Teeny Howard uh, and Ram V in order to create the universe that all of these books are going to be taking place in. Um, basically, Hickman came up with kind of the basic concept Al Ewing has designed the religious systems for it, Teeny Howard designed the magic systems, and Ram 5, Ram, I want to call him Ram 5, every time, Ram 5. Uh, Ram V has designed an economic model for the universe uh, that is going to allow all of them to kind of have different things to play with, uh, which again is an interesting grouping of collaboration. The idea that everybody put their ideas kind of into this stew and then they're going to work together to put new stuff out sounds fantastic to me. Um, uh, he goes on to talk a little bit more about what Three Worlds, Three Moons is, uh, which is at the moment all very vague. He describes it as a concept universe, like a concept album, where a group of people are going to come together to put out whatever this is. Is it multiple books? Is it four different authors writing one book with different chapters and characters moving in and out? Which again, if they control the entire production line and the release schedule, they can do whatever they want. Son, you're killing me. <sighs> whenever I record, whenever I record, he wants he wants to freak out. Uh, but then we do see here, and then of course, quote, and then of course there will be an endless number of comics adding to this unfolding mythology. This is the launch of a new universe in comics. 
the new and exciting place to tell the best possible stories with no boundaries. Uh, and again, that is fantastic to me. Um, you know, I don't know how many of these comics you're going to get access to with your subscription to Three Worlds, Three Moons, um, because we, we later, uh, when you go to hit subscribe, you're given a couple different options. You can pay $80 annually, $8 a month, um, 200 something for like the, the top tier kind of thing, um, or you could subscribe for free and you just don't get as much stuff. Um, so I don't know we don't know yet at what level you get what amount of comic books. Like, if they end up putting out 25 comic books on a monthly basis and you're subscribed to the $8 uh, tier, $8 a month level, do you do you get all 25 comics for $8? Because that sounds kind of, like, mind-boggling. Like, from a, a monetary production standpoint, that bought... That's crazy. Um, so, well, I guess we're going to see. Um... He goes on to say that there is some collector stuff going on. Uh, if you sign up as an annual subscriber, you can get a bunch of collectibles or, or access to extra bonusy kind of stuff. Um, so you know, we'll we'll go on to see at that point. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm mostly just excited. There's been a lot of talk recently. Uh, we do, we do have some nice infographics. This is kind of the main image for the company. It is three worlds. Do do do. Uh, and three moons, do do do. Um, it's pretty. It's a it's a very it's a very Hickman looking image. If you hadn't told me that this was a project Hickman was working on, uh, I would have known it from there. Uh, I did subscribe, by the way. I subscribed to the eight dollars a month level because I figure I, I want I want to see what this is, whether whether it succeeds or fails or or whatever. Um, I'm down for it. I want to I want to check out what this is. There there are a couple other small documents. Um, th this is another one of the logos three moons, three worlds it can be read either way uh, which is pretty neat uh, and we do have a primer document going into kind of some of the themes and the basic idea of this which is basically the idea that life is going to be going through cycles of good and evil where society reaches a point where it becomes most susceptible to evil things happening and then society will collapse and then as society rebuilds itself, there will be a point where society is most susceptible to the forces of good and things will get better from there. Uh, as you can see here, we've got our story is going to be happening between these. Um, and then we've got a little bit about the setting, not a whole hell of a lot. It's just basically it's the Earth solar system, but it has three habitable worlds and three moons. There you go. Um, we get a little bit into the mythology and symbology of it, uh, which is represented by the planets. Uh, as you can see here, we've this is this is the most high school uh, let me get on the screen this is some of the most high school naming conventions i've ever seen fire becomes fairy earth becomes thera which is a lot like terra water becomes aqua which is a lot like aqua air is air order is ordo and chaos is chaos is chaoso which like man if i didn't do that kind of stuff in my notebooks in high school i don't know who else did that cracks me up um which again goes on, these are basically the, the world. So fire, water, and earth, fire, water, and earth, uh, air, chaos, and order. Or air, order, chaos. Bah, 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 bah. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we do have some promo stuff coming up soon. So we'll get to see more stuff as the, the this concept moves forward. Um, but yeah, I think this is super neat. I think it's very interesting. Um, Scott Snyder also recently said he's going to be putting out a whole bunch of stuff through through Substack. Uh, James Tinian uh, is going to be leaving Batman in order to work solely on cre excuse me on creator own stuff, including Substack. Um, so this is this is going to be a very interesting challenge to the standard comic book industry, which I'm I'm personally fine with. Um, I love I love when any comic book company tries to do something new. Uh, I've been breaking down Scion from CrossGen Comics on the podcast recently, and CrossGen didn't so much try to change the kind of stories that the industry was telling, but it tried to change how it treated its creators, and it didn't work. But I remember the excitement that I felt as a comic fan getting to be in on something at the ground level, getting to watch it grow and interact with people and discover those stories, 
and I'm hoping, I know I won't have the same experience, but I'm hoping to have a similar experience with something along these lines. Um, it's, it's really a whole bunch of unknowns right now. Um, obviously, there's a couple downsides in that, again, you're not getting a physical copy of the comic, which is, is always going to be a shame to me. Um, and then, of course, there's the fact that people... The more people who work on independent stuff means the less people who are going to be working on franchises that you might like. Um, Tinian's run on Batman is the first time I've ever reliably bought a Batman comic. I, I think he just nails the character's voice in a way that I haven't seen another author do before. And him leaving Batman's a real shame because my immediate first thought was, oh, well, cool. I get to stop reading Batman now. Um, but if Hickman leaves the X books, that's going to be a bit of a shame. Like, damn, man. What do they do now? I mean, obviously they're going to do what the X-Men books always do, which is just keep on trucking. It's just been so nice to have, like, a guiding vision for the X-Books where the past... Whew, the past, like, ten years of X-Books has, has felt like floundering in the dark for anything that hits anymore. Um, I suppose... Uh, I suppose I can do a little something like that since we're, we're out of that. Um, but, yeah, I'm just very interested and intrigued and excited by this i've never signed up to a subscription service faster uh so we'll see from there i will keep you folks informed as more stuff here changes or as we start to see content i'll probably talk about it a little bit more um i'm very excited about the possibilities here and a little nervous for how it's going to affect the industry i don't want things to affect the industry negatively but i'm always a fan of new challenges and growth and hopefully moving forward into something new that we haven't seen before that's really exciting to me and uh and yeah uh if you're interested in this do a google search three moons three worlds uh subscribe yourself there is a free tier i don't know what you get at the free tier again it's eight dollars a month otherwise um and you know if you're just intrigued pay attention to the show like i said i'm gonna keep talking i'm gonna keep talking about it i think this stuff's cool as heck um, I'll probably take a look at uh, Tinian and Snyder stuff. If if I like my experience with Hickman stuff here with Three Three Worlds, Three Moons, I'll probably more seriously look into Scott Snyder and Tinian stuff uh, as it comes out. So ho hopefully, hopefully it's good. I don't see why it wouldn't be, but hopefully it's good. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Have a good one. We will be back with something else next time. Uh, New episode of the podcast this Thursday. Haha, <laughs> yeah. All right, bye.